Hello, Namaste. I am back uh, with the next set of lectures on uh, uh, geographic systems. Specifically, uh, as I said in my previous lecture, I would be speaking on the coordinate systems. So, uh, understanding this coordinate system is extremely important and say, extremely essential when you are when uh, you have to uh, work on a map. Okay. So, when we look at this entire lecture, lecture is being divided into some uh, concepts like uh, coordinate reference system which is also called as CRS. Then we look at geographical coordinate system or called as GCS in simpler terms. Then uh, geographic coordinates, what do you mean by geographic coordinates? The geodetic datum, okay. Then representation of the earth. So, we will look, uh, we will cover all of these topics in this uh, particular lecture. The first thing when we look at the coordinate reference system, Whenever I refer CRS, it is nothing but a coordinate uh, reference system. So, when I say coordinate system, it is an xy grid upon which, so it is always an x and a y. So, it is xy grid, okay, upon which a GIS data is overlaid and we how we define a point that is located on the earth's surface or in the space, okay. So, now horizontal and vertical units these are the units that are used to define the grid along the x y and in if in case it's necessary z z axis or z axis so when you look at this a modeled version of the shape of the earth earth which actually defines the origin used to place the coordinate system in space so it is a origin used to place a coordinate system in space okay that is nothing but a datum okay so when uh, we look at datum in more pictorial uh, pictorial form so you will understand what is a datum then is the projection information projection information when we look at it the mathematical equation that is used to flatten a 3d object into a 2d object okay a 3d round earth shape into a 2d flat map then it is called a uh, projections information I spoke to you uh, spoke about this in my first lecture of this uh, particular module. So, when whenever we look at coordinate referencing system we have to look at coordinate system then look at the vertical units horizontal and vertical units are x and y and in some and in many cases as z axis ok. Then look at datums and finally look at the projection information without which your CRS would not stand ok. So, keep uh, this in mind. So, whenever you are looking at CRS look at all of these four quantities then only you will be able to understand the CRS. There are two important uh, systems in the earth reference system referencing system. So, coordinate referencing system. So, be very careful. So, these are the four different quantities that we have to see that I explained in my previous slide, but in order to reference you have two types of system one is called as a geographical coordinate system is a reference a system for identifying locations on the curved earth of a uh, curved surface of the earth. But there is something called as a projected coordinate system is a reference system to identify location measuring on a flat map. So, G, uh, uh, when you see GCS it is more of identifying location on the curved earth surface and when you are looking at the PCS that is a project coordinate system or a projected coordinate system it is on a flat map it is on a 2D map. So, keep this in mind these are reference systems ok. So, when we look at geographical coordinate system it is normally is, a, is in decimal degrees and are helpful when you need to locate a place on the earth. For example, uh, the, a very good example that probably many of you have looked at is the Google Maps ok. Sometimes uh, when you are actually hovering uh, I would suggest something like this if you are looking at this particular lecture open up your Google Maps ok and open up a particular place where you may have to travel maybe tomorrow day after tomorrow etc. Look at the distance from that to that particular place fine. Now you are comfortable at looking at that distance. Now just take out that red pointer and put it somewhere else which the map does not have a name. So, what does it show? It actually tells you the x and y of that particular place that is in terms of maybe in degree decimals or in degree minutes and seconds. Yes, that is what I am speaking about uh, the GCS, GCS system. 
So, latitude and longitude locations are not located using uniform measurement units. Please keep this in mind. That is what is one of the major disadvantage of the system. So, GCS are not ideal for measuring distances and other, and other projected CRS have been developed to address this particular issue. If you have to measure distance, then latitude, longitude, the way the GCS works is not the way you use it. But if you have to use uh, the measurement system, then use a projected coordinate system. The GCS locates latitude, longitude location using angles. Thus, the spacing of each line of a latitude moving north and south is not quite uniform, which you can look at it here. Okay. So, a GCS, when, when you look at a GCS coordinate system, the north, uh, the lines that are moving to the north or the south is not very uniform and you can never measure anything uh, as a distance measure in a GCS system. Whereas, in your projected coordinate system, it is much easier to understand. When you look at geographical coordinates on the earth's surface, mainly you would have seen it in the form of a latitude and a longitude. When I say latitude, these are measured in degree north or south of the equator also known as parallels of the equator. Okay. Longitude also uh, measured in degrees east or west, east or west of the Greenwich uh, prime meridian also known as parallels of meridian. So, when we look at this particular uh, example here that I have mentioned, if this is your earth surface that you have considered. Okay. Now, we know equator, equator is central part of the uh, line that is passing to the center of the earth surface, which is 0, okay, 0 degree. Now, if you start drawing lines at this something like this, these are latitudes and in as northing. When you are writing this, this is towards the south, these are latitudes. So, when you draw latitudes, all are in north and south latitudes. And when if the same thing, if you start drawing like this, these are longitudes. Okay. This is if this is 0, this is the line that is easting and westing. From here you have uh, easting and from here you have westing, something like this. this is a prime meridian which is 0, you have 30 degrees, 60 degrees east whereas you have 30 degree west and 60 degree west. Now, my prime question to many of the students would be something like this. I have an earth surface something like this. Now, this is your 0 equator and this is your 0 prime meridian. Okay. Now, if someone wants to locate a latitude on which axis you would measure to uh, to actually locate a latitude and which axis you would measure to locate a long longitude. So, the, the answer here is if you are locating a longitude, for example, if you write longitude here. So, now it is actually intersecting on the x axis. So, longitude measurements are on the x axis, but it is represented as y. Okay, because you have x axis representing these are longitude measurements. Now, if you want to do a latitude measurements, so what you would do, let us say this is the earth surface. Now, this is your equator, right. So, you want to do a latitude measurements, which means if this is your prime meridian, if you start having the north thing here, 30 north, 60 north, 90 north. So, now you are intersecting on the y axis, right. So, your measurement is on x values, okay. So, x comma y, so latitude comma longitude, this is how you arrive at it. So, please remember longitude will have its marking on the x axis, latitudes will have marking on the x axis, uh, on the y axis. So, this is where most of the students make a mistake. So, uh, please under, understand how the latitudes are marked and longitudes are marked. So, clubbing this will give you the entire earth's grid. Okay. So, once we have understood this, we will move on to the next uh, uh, 
so, uh, understanding latitudes and longitudes defined using are defined using an ellipsoid or a spheroid and ellipse rotated about an axis okay elevation is defined using a geoid okay a surface of constant gravitational pull we have already looked at it and earth datums define the standard values of the ellipsoid and the geoid okay so when when we are looking at uh, the geographical coordinate system when we look at the entire earth grid it is actually formed by combining the entire latitude and longitude so you cannot say if you are if you are located at this particular point uh, on, uh, in india so you cannot say that this is at only latitude of this you have to represent latitude and longitude then only you will be able to very clearly say this is the point on the earth surface where i am located on so uh, you have to give both latitude and longitude in reference to equator and one with reference to greenwich prime meridian so without which your entire earth grid is not complete okay so a coordinate system is basically a standardized method so how do you define a coordinate system is just as, as a standardized method for assigning codes to locations so that location can be uh, can be easily accessed by just codes okay my latitude longitude are just look as codes using those codes anyone can find so every if let's say there are four people who are looking at four different uh, locations if we have the same a uh, way of uh, looking at this or same coordinates that we are actually looking at and uh, everyone is looking uh, at latitude longitude of a particular place so it's easier for us to compile the data if it is completely different then it may not be easy for us to compile the data so it is a codes to understand a particular place region a phenomena etc okay then standardized coordinate systems uh, use absolute locations exact locations a map captured in the units of a paper sheet on which a it is printed is based on relative locations or map millimeters so that we have to remember all the time in a coordinate system the x direction values is the eastings and the y direction value is the northings so uh, that i have already shown x direction value is the eastings y direction value is the northings so please keep this in mind i have already explained how latitude and longitude is measured where uh, latitude intersects and where longitude intersects and how the values are measured in a latitude and longitude system in a coordinate system the x uh, direction values is existing and y uh, spread uh, most is, may our systems make use uh, make the values as positive fine then next comes the geocentric coordinates geocentric coordinates is uh, was used uh, uh, in various ways it is extremely important uh, in terms of when you are trying to make the measurements so geocentric coordinates are based on a rectangular coordinate system with the origin at the center of the earth surface so if this if we consider this this is the center of the earth surface the z axis is a coaxial with the axis of the center of the earth so uh, if you are representing the z axis if this is the center of the earth here okay if you consider this as center of the earth this is coaxial from the center of the earth then the x axis is through the zero meridian when you are looking at the x axis it has zero meridian and uh, in the uh, greenwich and y is orthogonal to the earth axis so this is orthogonal to the uh, uh, plus x, x axis now when you are looking at geocentric you have plus and minus also located and we we'll look at uh, some examples as we uh, go go to the next slides so but when you are looking at geocentric systems it is the first thing that you have to understand is geodetic datums geoid models attempts to represent the surface of the earth if you are looking at this as a surface of the earth it is actually representing the entire surface of the earth over both land and ocean through surface resulted from the gravity alone okay so now this is measuring in all the surface of the earth it is okay but it is based on the earth's gravity okay geodetic datums define the reference system so be very specific here that describe the size and shape of the earth and the origin and orientation of the coordinate system used to map the earth 
So now when you are looking at uh, this, okay, the thing that you have to look at geodetic datums are defining a reference system. Okay, then it describes the size and shape of the earth. What is the size of the earth? The shape of the earth and origin and orientation of the coordinate systems. So all of these uh, together will form a datum. Okay. So mean sea level is a surface of the constant gravitational pull which I have already spoken about in my uh, previous class. Okay. So uh, when, we, uh, uh, when we are looking at uh, geoid, let me go back to my previous uh, uh, slide. So when we are actually looking at a geoid, we are actually looking at a constant gravitational pull on the earth's surface and this is called as a reference grid or a reference point. So when you are looking at a referencing any ge geodetic coordinates to a wrong datum, it can actually rep uh, replicate the position errors to hundreds of meters. So if you are using a wrong datum and you are trying to reference a particular system, then you are, for if you are measuring it in India, it can even fall in somewhere in Africa or uh, America uh, in terms of where you are placing your map. Then different nations and agencies use different datums okay, uh, on, as the basis for coordinate systems used for identifying positions in the geographic information system. So please uh, remember this. So whenever you are looking at datum, it can be in any uh, different datums, but you can always convert it uh, to the datum that you are actually looking at okay, to give you uh, much uh, 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 detailed understanding if uh, this particular line that is a brown line as I am drawing is the earth surface okay, and the dotted line here is your sea surface that we are trying to see okay. and if I draw a line that is actually looking at the mean sea surface with a constant gravitational pull, then it becomes your geoid. Okay? So as I said, earth surface is nothing but an ellipsoid. Okay? So looking at a geoid is something like this. So now when you have your mean sea level which is equivalent to a geoid, okay? if you have a mean sea level that is equivalent to your geoid, if this is your mean sea level. So your elevation z is 0. As you go on above, your elevation will be equivalent to the point that is measured from the mean sea level to the height of this particular place. That gives the elevation of that particular region, which means elevation is nothing but mean sea level plus zp in meters. Okay? So next time when you actually go to any of your railway stations in your city, your region, please look at what is the elevation your city is in or the, that particular railway station is in. So you will get a fair idea of if you are moving in different cities, different regions, then you will be able to get different uh, elevations, how, where the city, which elevation has is in the higher point and which is at the lower point. So you get, you will understand the way of representation of the earth surface or how the earth surface is there in the entire Indian subcontinent. Okay, so now let us go to the uh, uh, examples of geographic coordinate system. The very well known geographic coordinate system is the word geodetic system. This, uh, this particular uh, geographic coordinate system was established in 1984, that is why it is called as WGS 84. This uh, geoid reference the geoid height from the entire earth. So it is mostly used uh, uh, geographic or GCS system. It fits well for most of the countries across the world. So many, most of the work that is done today is in WGS 84. Okay, if uh, if you find any, any uh, I mean most of what whoever does is in common with uh, this particular system. Then you have uh, the global positioning system which uses the WGS 84. So now you you the collection system where you are collecting your data is also in your WGS 84. It is fair enough to use your system also in WGS 84. So it is uh, representing an earth model uh, in terms of a WGS 84. Normally it is in the form of a meters, both the measurements are in the form of a 
meters okay so understanding this will also go into some uh, examples of other uh, geographic coordinate system the the very basic geographic coordinate system for indian subcontinent you can see uh, maybe if someone has used some of uh, uh, the older uh, uh, satellite data products uh, it used to come in the everest uh, or everest uh, or indian datum system so this used to be the reference system that we used to use but today uh, we can get in wgs 84 directly from uh, the uh, national remote sensing center so survey of india uses the everest datum for more than 150 years to map the entire country along with nepal and pakistan and bangladesh okay so named after india india's first surveyor general sir Ma george everest so it is not with uh, as uh, many in if you see in many of the theories they say it as uh, based on the mount everest no it is based on the surveyor uh, george everest he was the first one who surveyed uh, and uh, uh, made the physical uh, geography uh, geographical uh, representation the Indian spheroid has been marginally modified on a number of occasions. For example, Indian Indian 1880, so that is that is again as called Everest 80. Then you have Everest 1930 or Indian 1956. So these are different uh, ways uh, where this particular system has changed. Now, for example, whatever we saw in WGS 84, uh, there is a small change when we look at uh, Indian system. Now what is that particular change if you look at as i said uh, if you take this as the earth surface that you have okay if you are taking this as the earth surface okay now this is your geoid okay this is what something like this okay this is the one that is for everest if you look at WGS 84, you have something like this. Okay, so each of this, each of this is representing. This is a Clark 18, 1866. I'll take some other color. So Clark 1866. This is representing uh, the Everest 1830. Then you have the this representing the uh, the Everest ellipsoid. So ellipsoid is also important, and this representing the Earth center. So now each datum has a different earth centers that is clearly mentioned here. So and based on that you look at the topographic surface and based on the topographic surface you fix your uh, the entire datum okay that that is what Indian datum is based on that is how it is different but nowadays uh, uh, most uh, mostly it is not used whereas WGS 84 is much used in various applications okay. So, then another example of a geographic coordinate system is a NAT27. This used to be used uh, heavily uh, when uh, when this uh, particular data was used uh, was uh, 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 actually introduced in 1927. Okay, so this particular uh, system was uh, uh, had been uh, took over by Clark 1866 spheroid with the datum and fixed the lat long at Kansas. So now uh, this particular uh, data fits north america very well so there are certain systems even today where nat27 is you are used in a very prolific manner so nat nat27 system, uh, system is extremely useful uh, in north america but whenever it comes to other continents it is a bit distorted so using a the same nat27 system in terms of using it in the uh, on indian subcontinent may not be much uh, useful but whereas if you use uh, india uh, everest in the indian subcontinent it is of much useful but because of the complexity involved in terms of uh, having it on the system and converting it to other uh, types uh, this particular everest system is not used but uh, wgs84 is one system which is extensively used across the globe anyone who is working on uh, the aspects of a map uh, today uses a wgs84 system most of your satellite data, most of your data from different sensors, etc., are georeferenced using the WGS84 uh, as a geographic coordinate system. So uh, I would suggest, uh, and we would also, in the in the course of uh, uh, giving certain examples, or when you are looking at the software, we would primarily stick on to WGS84 uh, 84 
as a geographic coordinate system okay so with this now let me uh, summarize today's uh, class so when we look at the coordinate reference system we have two types of uh, referencing one is geographic coordinate another one is polar coordinate so when we are looking at this we have uh, latitude longitude as uh, as the referencing system but uh, when we uh, uh, it it may not be very useful in terms of measuring it measuring the distances when you look at geodetic datums these are measuring elevations on the earth's surface so uh, please be careful so you have uh, i hope everyone has understood what you mean by a datum what you mean by a coordinate system so then we looked at the representations of the earth so uh, please remember this representation of earth is to represent how a particular land mass is then subdued from the third uh, third dimensional uh, uh, earth to a second dimension uh, two dimensional earth where it can be easily interpreted otherwise it is much difficult for anyone to visualize what is there on the earth surface then representations of the earth surface that we have seen the examples of different gcs so i am repeating again so wgs 84 is much referred system we have various other systems if you just open uh, any of uh, your uh, tool boxes um, uh, any of your software for example and just go to the georeferencing tool and if you open up the referencing system you can find a huge list of referencing system so each country has its own way each uh, uh, particular organization has its own way each, each particular uh, uh, i mean a user has his, his or her own way of representation so there are huge number of referencing systems so but with this huge number when you look at the indian subcontinent it is the everest referencing system that is used the most okay which has evolved over a period of time uh, from uh, 1800s uh, 1880s to uh, uh, till 19, 1956 but now uh, it is not much uh, much of use or it is not much used in for a referencing system whereas wgs 84 is much uh, used in all terms because easiness in terms of measuring any uh, any uh, distance of any object on the earth surface so that we have seen then we looked at nat 27 then uh, which is actually for the uh, only for america basically north american part it is extremely useful but in other continents it may not be much useful in terms of uh, applications so now we have understood what is a coordinate system what is a coordinate system what do you mean by coordinates what do you mean by a datum and a geoid right so in the next class we'll understand what is a map how do you represent a map what are the different standards of representing a map then if you have to build a map and present it how do you actually present it and if in case you want to search a neighboring map how do you search a map how particular map numbering is done as far as indian uh, subcontinent is concerned so all of this we'll look at but only thing that you should remember whenever i am going to speak about uh, gcs please uh, remember all the things that we have learnt from the datum to your coordinate system once we have done we have understood what the map map quality is then we will look at what you mean by a projection so that is the last part of uh, this particular module where we would be looking at how do you project the earth surface onto a map and what are the different qualities that you have to see thank you very much so we'll meet in the next class